أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. Dear students, uh, today on 12th of April 2020, we have to start our uh, new topic in our Zoom class that is the arrangement of electrons and ions. So, what are our teaching objectives today? That we will learn about the number of shells and the formula to put number of electrons in an atom. Inshallah, we will have a detailed session about it. And then how do the electrons contribute in the formation of ions? So let's start with our first topic. That is the arrangement of electrons. Well, students, uh, we had already discussed in our previous lesson that according to Bohr and Rutherford, the atom is a structure in which the electrons are continuously moving around the nucleus. As you can see in this picture, that electrons are continuously moving around the nucleus. So based on that concept, Bohr and Rutherford further suggested about the arrangement of electrons in the shells because they are continuously moving and rotating and revolving around the nucleus. So how to arrange the electrons in an atom? So according to them, there are four shells around the nucleus of an atom. Okay, if you look around this picture, this black dot over here is representing the nucleus of any atom. The very first shell which you can see around this nucleus is, was termed as K shell. The next shell after this K shell was termed as L shell. The next uh, after that L shell was named as M shell and the last was N shell and so on and so on. So all these namings of the shells were also suggested and um, devised by Bohr and Rutherford uh, in their atomic theory. Okay, students. So there are four shells around the nucleus of an atom. That is K shell, the very first shell, L shell, the second shell, M shell, the third shell, N shell, the fourth shell and so on and so on. It depends on the number of electrons which has to be arranged in an atom. So up till now we understand that there are certain naming of the shells which are present around the atom. Now the next question is that how and according to which rule we can fill up these shells. So again, a uh, rule was designed by Bohr and Rutherford and the formula was 2 and 2. 2 and 2 is being used to fill up the shells. Now, let's have a look how this rule is being followed in filling of uh, the shells by a specific number of electrons. So the letter in N in the formula represent any whole number. That is, it can be 1. It can be two, it can be three, it can be four, and so on. Okay, so let's say I will take this formula two and two, and in this case, students, the value of this whole number n is one, let's say. Okay, so if you will put the value of n in the formula over here, so two multiplied by one multiplied by one because n is raised to power two means you have to write this number two times. So I wrote two multiplied by one multiplied by one. So two ones are two again, two ones are two. So it means that you can arrange two electrons up to maximum into this K shell, which is the first shell. I again, I'm again showing you this first shell. So according to Bohr and Rutherford, in K shell, we can fit only two electrons by this rule of two and two. Okay. Now, if the value of N is two now, okay, students? So what it will be? Two is the form of formulas two. Then 
value of put the value of this n2 over here two times because it is again n raised to power 2 so two twos are 4 and four twos are 8 so it becomes 8 electrons so it means that you can fit or fill 8 electrons in l shell means over l shell you can arrange 8 electrons up to its maximum okay students i hope you are understanding up till now next is that if the value of n is 3 now again i will write two of the formula the value of n is 3 this time so i will write 3 two times according to formula again so 2 3s are 6 and 6 3s are 18 so it means now in m shell we have the choice of adjusting or arranging 18 electrons in this m shell and the same formula will keeps going on and we will fit uh, next time we will take the value of this n4 and we will calculate in l shell uh, then the next we will take the next example and so on and so on so i hope by the briefing of this formula you can easily understand that in k shell you can adjust maximum of two electrons in l shell you can adjust eight electrons and in m shell you can adjust 18 electrons and in n shell so on and so on it depends on the number or the value of n okay i hope you have understand up till now so Next, let's have an example of this sodium. Okay, students. Over here, I want to mention again that whenever we adjust the number of electrons, we always take into consideration about the atomic number of that atom. Remember, we don't consider mass number over here because if you recall your previous lesson, mass number is the number of protons and number of neutrons. But over here, we have to adjust only electrons. So in my previous lesson, I told that atomic number is the number of protons. So indirectly, it is also telling us the number of electrons. So if you can, you will look onto this uh, picture over here, that sodium has 11 as its atomic number. It means I have to arrange 11 electrons over here. So if you look into this diagram, you can see in the very first shell, how many electrons are being adjusted over here? Two, one, and this is the two, according to our, this formula. Two electrons have been filled over here. If we look into the next shell now, which is the L shell, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So again, according to this formula in L shell, which is the second shell, how many electrons we can fit? Eight electrons that we have uh, arranged over here. And after counting two and eight, what is the what what will be our total? Ten. Now we only need to adjust one more electron because only one electron over here is needed to be filled. Okay, students. So remember, it doesn't mean that in every electron, uh, sorry, in every shell, we have to fit the maximum number of 2, 8, and uh, 18. No. When the first shell is being completed, we will uh, do it. When the next shell will be completed, okay. And if even any number or any electron is left, then we will fit into the third shell or the next shell. So in this case, you have seen that we, how many electrons we have arranged till now? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And we are left with only one electron. So automatically, students, this last eleventh electron will be filled in the M shell. Although we can fill over here eighteen, but we are not required to fill 18 over here that's why we will fill our the last electron in the m shell so i hope you have understand about the types of shells and their names the formula to fill up the uh, electrons in these respective shells i have briefed you in detail about the formula 
that in K shell, how can we adjust two electrons? In L shell, how can we adjust eight electrons up to maximum? And in M shell, 18 and so on and so on. And then I have given you the example of this atom sodium. So after that, I will assign you the table on page number 35 of your textbooks to go through by this table and try to arrange the electrons as a practice from that table, okay? And you can send me your feedback through WhatsApp. Well, next topic, which is on page number 36 is students' points. Well, normally when we say and take the name, we always take the name that it is sodium atom, it is chlorine atom. So what is the difference between atom and an ion? An ion is a charged particle of an atom is called an ion. Okay, so how it becomes a charged particle? Now look at this diagram and understand it carefully. Again, I'm, I have taken the example of the sodium. We have just filled two electrons in the first shell, eight electrons in the second shell, and one electron over here. Isn't it, students? So mostly the atoms with this one sphere, with the one electron, sorry, they become unstable. Atoms always tend to pair up with the other atom. In this way, the atoms become stable in the normally uh, uh, chemical reactions or in generally in the atomic state. So this one electron which is over here is making this sodium atom unstable. So as this electron will be needed by some other atom, it loses its outer electron and it will now have only two shells around it as you can see because it has given this uh, last one electron to any other atom. So whenever any atom loses its electron, it becomes a positively charged particle. Means in this state, we can call this so we can call it as sodium ion rather than sodium atom because it has transferred its one of the last unpaired electron and now it has become stable because in first shell it is all it can make a pair over here you can see this can make a pair this can make a pair this can make a pair and this can make a pair so it becomes stable but in this state now we will not call it as sodium atom rather we will call it as sodium ion now the question arises that why we name it as positive because listen students carefully that electrons are negatively charged particles, isn't it? And we also know that the number of electrons and the number of protons are always same, okay? They are always same. It means that sodium has 11 protons and 11 electrons, but now the sodium has lost or uh, transfer one of its negative ion, but still in the atom of sodium, there are 11 positive protons. So because positive charges are more in this situation than the negative charges, so this atom will automatically become a positive charged particle. I hope you have understand it about the positive charged particle. Now let's take the example of this chlorine atom. Okay, students, this chlorine is having, you can count two electrons in the first shell. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight in the second shell. And in the last shell, it has one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Okay. Again, the situation is there that this chlorine atom is again unstable because one of its atom is not in the pair form. It, these two can make pair, these two can make pair, these two can make pair, but this lone pair of electron cannot make any pair. So again, this chlorine atom becomes unstable. So let's say the one 
electron which has been transferred from that sodium that may be carried by this chlorine over here you can see that now there are eight electrons rather than seven electrons so one two three four five six seven and eight so by receiving or by gaining one extra electron it has become stable this chlorine atom has become stable but in this state now we call it as chlorine ion okay students and as you can see that over here it is cl minus means negative why it has become negative students because in this case now it has received one extra negative charge particle in the form of electron so automatically there are 17 positive protons in the nucleus in this situation but 18 electrons in the um, atom so again the number of electrons now become more over here as compared to protons so it will become cl minus or the negative ion so in this way actually the chemical reactions takes place this ion concept of ion is the basis of bonding inshallah in our next topics we will learn about ionic bonding and covalent bonding so this concept of ion will help you over there so that is all from um, the class today that we have learned about today we have learned about this um, arrangement of electrons the formula and the rule suggested by Bohr and uh, Rutherford. Then we have learned about the rule of this two and two. Then we have looked about upon this um, example of sodium. And then in the last, we have discussed about this oil. If you have any question or query in your mind after watching this video, you can contact me on my WhatsApp number or on the Google class. Thank you.